Hey guys, how are you? Jonas Gebhardt here, wishing you a happy Friday. Uh, sitting here in my studio having a little bit of coffee. Hope you had a good week. I did not. I had the sniffles the first part of the week, so my wife freaked out. We started check, doing PCR tests, found out I'm negative, 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 three, three COVID tests later. I'm all good but I had to blow out my whole week <laughs> because everybody was afraid they would catch something from me. So anyway, I thought I would uh, spend a little time with you today, have a little conversation, if you will. And um, I think today what I really want to share with you is uh, my spin on what I call fake news. You know, fake news is a terminology that... Uh, was created in the last four years, and it's been used by national news media and things of that sort. Um, but you know, it exists even in the hairdressing business. There's a lot of fake news, meaning there's a lot of information out there, but it's not accurate. And you guys know that I spend a lot of time calling out some of this stuff because my concern is for you that are trying to learn the real story about hair color, how it works, how to be successful with it, how to formulate successful. Um, that's our total vision at Guru Nation is helping you become a more successful salon professional and colorist than you all already are. So <clears throat> social media, last week I got sent this uh, post by a social media influencer who is very well known, um, has somewhere between 300,000 and a half a million followers and uh, touts themselves as being a, a hair color maven, if you will. Um, and so this information is being spread out there and, and, the thing is, is that if you're new to the industry and you're trying to learn how to successfully perform a hair color service, it can be very confusing for you. So I'm going to just walk you through the uh, statement and then share some information about what we're doing at Guru Nation. So um, bear with me while I do this. So as I took and dissected each segment of this post, the first segment that I dissected was something that, you know, this person was saying that, you know, this is what they promote to their clients. They said, as many of our guests know, it's rare that a stylist will not gloss you after a lightning service. A gloss as has many names, which, which it does. This person's absolutely correct. Glaze, toner, etc. cetera. It doesn't matter what you call it. Uh, even if you call it a gloss, <laughs> what you're doing is you're putting a color on hair. We categorize them because we think that there's a huge difference, but there's really, really not. Um, but it all means the same thing. Semi or demi permanent hair color that has dozens of benefits. Here are six reasons why you need to have a glossing during every hair color service. So obviously this person presents this to their clients. You know, this is a, a piece of literature they're permitting to their clients, but they posted it on social media where they're followed by professionals. And so, let me do a little bit of dissecting. First of all, let's just think for just a minute. <clears throat> it's important to understand many glossing products are permanent hair color that minimizes tonal shift during color service. That's really what a demi-permanent, which got the name of glossing, a demi-permanent product is. It's nothing more than a permanent hair color. I don't care who makes it. They're using oxidative dyes. Here's the thing that will always be the revealing factor. If you have to mix your hair color product, no matter what category it's in, if you have to mix it with an oxidizing agent, a processing solution, an activating solution, no matter what you call that, we have tons of names for peroxide, H2O2. <clears throat> if you have to mix it with that, you, you are working with permanent hair color meaning that you're working with what is called an oxidative dye. So it will not develop into a hair color unless you mix it with, a, <coughs> excuse me, 
an oxidizer or an acid. The second thing, if you mix it, well, I just covered my own statement here. If you mix it with an oxidizing or processing solution, it's called permanent hair color. So let's be real about this whole story. Even though we put them in different categories, we're really working with different forms of permanent hair color. So here's the next statement <clears throat> that is shared with the client. It says, the main purpose of a gloss is that it closes down the cuticle and, regardless, and regulates the pH. Isn't that amazing? When you color the hair, your cuticle opens to remove and deposit hair color. When your color is done processing, the shampooing conditioning closes the cuticle a little bit, but it remains open slightly. If the cuticle remains open, a few bad things can happen. Keep reading. So now this person is building a picture uh, that even though I'm coloring my hair, even though I've used a shampoo and conditioner, the cuticle is still going to remain open. So here's where we start with the first piece of fake news. First of all, most glossing products process at a pH of seven. It's important for you to know this. Some even higher. In fact, some products that um, say you can make a demi permanent from a permanent by mixing it with a magic solution, you're really working with something setting at a pH of eight or nine, most often at nine. And that's extremely high when you consider that the optimum pH for the hair in order to constrict the cuticle must be 4.5 to 5.5. All demi-permanent hair colors must swell the cuticle in order to deposit their own colorant. That's the way we made them. You, we couldn't deposit oxidative dyes in the hair unless we created some swelling of the cuticle. By swelling the cuticle, we sometimes create minimal tonal shift. Even if you can't see it, it still is happening because sometimes the pigment, the texture of the hair, releases the natural melanin much easier. It breaks down very easy. And we get that tonal shift that we all try to fight against. <coughs> Ergo, <laughs> it's, a it's chemically impossible to close the cuticle with a demi permanent hair color. It's chemically impossible to close the cuticle with a demi permanent color. Now repeat that three times. Very important that we do this so that we understand the reality of what we are working with. But we don't stop there. The promotion goes on. So the next one says, it reduces frizz. The hair can look frizzy or dry if the cuticle is left open. That's true. <clears throat> if you suffer from frizz, the best bet is always gloss your hair and focus on utilizing hair products that have a lower pH. When used properly, this will guarantee your cuticle is staying closed and will leave your frizzy days behind. So the picture that is being painted now is that by using a gloss, it will remove the frizz. So frizz, the definition of frizz, is having been formed into a mass of tight curls. So what we commonly call frizz it's addressed with a smoothing product. Yes, it's a raised cuticle, but it's usually addressed with a smoothing product. It's actually a raised, it is actually a raised cuticle. So we're, it's a coating product that will cause that cuticle to lay down and at a low pH will also cause it to constrict because the hair re reacts to pH. Products with a pH higher than 5.5 will swell the cuticle. Simple as that. Water swells the cuticle about 17%. So it's impossible for something, ergo, it is chemically impossible to close the cuticle with a dummy permanent hair color. Can't be done. Can't not be done. <clears throat> Although we tell that story, and there are many people who believe that story. So let's think about what. The next piece says, next piece says, protect you from your water. I found this very interesting when I read this. If the cuticle is left open, the hair will quickly absorb minerals from your water, causing brass and discoloration. 
and also can make your hair weak and brittle. So it is true that the hair can absorb minerals from the water because some water systems have high ratios of minerals in them. But this story is saying that it protects you from the minerals in the water. So even though water swells the hair, most water systems have a pH of seven or higher, sometimes eight, sometimes nine. The thing to remember is most people use shampoo and conditioner <clears throat> with low pHs, 4.0 to 4.5. So if you don't know what the pH of your water is, you can buy one of these little bottles of pH water testing, take a glass of water, or take water, put it in a glass, put a couple drops in there, and the water will discolor. It'll tell you what the pH is. You can find the readings right on the side of the label here. And then just simply take your conditioner or your shampoo and just drop a little bit in the water and stir it around. You'll suddenly see the pH changes because you're using something with a low, more of an acid base to it. And so <clears throat> when we say it protects the hair from your water, it, it really it does not, it can't do that. That's something that product can't do that. So truly, if I'm using a good shampoo, a good conditioner and a good acidifying rinse, something at a pH of 3.5, that hair cuticle is gonna stay tight it's going to stay constricted, and we're not going to have the same situation that we are considering here. I, I suddenly, in the last year, people are so afraid of their water, and you really can't change that. So I'm sorry. You'll have to move if you want to change that. But as long as you're using good products, I one of my classes, I, I often say the best way, if you're worried about the water swelling your cuticle too much, all you simply do is take your shampoo first, work it up in your hands, work it through your hair, and then apply water. <clears throat> when you do that, you balance that pH, and the water is not going to swell your hair too extremely. Ergo, it is chemically impossible for hair color to protect from mineral buildup. No hair color can do that. Hair colors are at the mercy of mineral buildup. That's what happens. You know, chemically treated hair has more negative sites. Those are electrical charges along the hair strand. And those negative sites attract minerals and dirt and you know, all kinds of foreign material. You know, the hair is like a filter. You know, think back if you're old enough to remember when people smoked, or if you are old enough to have been a smoker years ago, or if your family members are older and we're have been smokers, you know that when you in a room where someone is smoking and you leave the room, many times your hair <coughs> ends up smelling like cigarettes. Why does that happen? It's because the hair picks up those elements. So it's very important how we treat the hair. But I want you to understand that color is not a color is not designed to do that. Once I apply color to the hair, it becomes a different chemical structure because I'm adding chemicals to the structure of the hair. All right, let's check out the next one. Uh, I found this one very interesting. It adds longevity to your color service. You just invested a pretty penny into your hair. If you don't gloss it, your color will start fading as soon as you wash your hair. Well, that is true that fading begins the, the more often you swell the cuticle and constrict the cuticle, swell the cuticle and constrict the cuticle, you encourage fading and exposing the hair to different elements, you encourage fading. Absolutely. If you gloss, the gloss will fade first, adding an extra three to four weeks of longevity to your service. I had a real problem with this whole story. And the reason I had a problem with this story is because Here's my questions. First of all, <clears throat> think about what you just read. You're not covering anything. I mean, the story makes it sound like we're putting a layer of color over another layer. And as color fades, the first layer will fade first. <laughs> and there's no way to measure that. 
And besides that, when we apply a color over a previous color, we are adding to what is there. In other words, we're breaking down some of those artificial dyes we just put in, and now we're adding new dyes to them. We're creating a new chemical color. So there, nothing is layered. It's not a parfait. You're not painting a wall, okay? When you add hair color to previously colored hair, you're adding the dye uh, combinations and th that are present there. So you make a new color. That's all that you're doing. Hair color is not layered like paint. So it can't protect. It can't do any of that. And besides that, my question is, why would you want to add an extra three to four weeks for your client? <laughs> You're telling them come in every 30 days. Now you're telling them they could go another, but they can come in every 60 days. Well, if something's happening at the scalp area, if you extend it that long, that scalp area is growing out past that first half inch. And now you're going to end up when you go to retouch it, creating band lines. So it doesn't make sense at all. Ergo, you cannot chemically extend the life of a hair color service with a gloss. Stop it. Stop saying that. <laughs> and it's just, you know, I, I, I would just laugh my fanny off if it, if it wasn't so sad that this is the kind of information that is out there. Can you understand why people are confused? I love this one. It regulates tone. Many times people are bringing in photos of hair color that goes completely against their dominant pigment. That's true. If we lift hair, the safest place to stop processing is when the hair reaches yellow or pale yellow stages. In that case, a gloss is essential to deposit <coughs> the tone's desire. Well, in that case, I wouldn't be calling it a gloss. I would be calling it a toner. Uh, and who says you have to stop at pale yellow, pale yellow and yellow? What if I want to make a darker shade of color? Right? I mean, what if I want to make a, a level seven copper red? What if I want to make a level eight golden blonde? Okay, the statement is accurate in part, except there are five stages to which you can tone hair. Orange, <clears throat> I'm not going to make blonde at orange, am I? But I can make red there. Amen. Red gold, I'm not going to make blonde at red gold but I can surely make a dark strawberry blonde. I can make a light copper blonde. Okay, gold. I'm not gonna make a really light blonde at gold, but at gold, I can make honey blondes. I can make um, taupe blondes. There's, there's all kinds of shades I can make at gold. Yellow, yellow. I'm not gonna make platinum at yellow, but I can make a pastel blonde. I can make strawberry blondes. <clears throat> and then pale yellow. There's only three colors you can make of pale yellow, by the way. Only three. People try to make others. Okay. First of all, you can make platinum blonde. That's white hair, snow bunny hair. Second of all, you can make ultra pastel blonde. Okay. So it's the lightest pastel blonde. There's still some degree of one. And you can make a silver blonde. Those are only three colors you can make at pale yellow. You try to make anything else at pale yellow, and you're going to get a color that's slightly off. Why? <clears throat> because there's not enough warmth in the hair to support any other color. If you try to make strawberry blonde at pale yellow, it turns pink or it turns peach. It doesn't turn the color that you want it to. So you can see where there's so much information here that sounds like they really know what they're talking about, and yet it's not accurate. Finally, it, protects, it provides UV protection. If you're out in the sun a lot or if you're going tanning, this can affect your color service as well. The gloss is your extra layer of protection. So now you're telling me that my hair color, which is victim, can fall victim to the UV rays from the sun, now you're telling my hair color will protect me, uh, will protect my hair. The V rays disturb the chromophores in hair. That they do that even in a natural hair. Chromophore is a molecule that emits color. That's why you see color. Col Remember, color is not 
anything that is actually physical is what you see. So chemicals mixed together, they create a visual result. We call it visual result color. Can affect your hair color, but it's artificial, be it artificial or natural. So if you have your hair tinted and you go out in the sun, I guarantee you your hair will lighten. I guarantee you your hair will, will fade, okay? There's no UV protection. There is some protection put into colors, but it's basically, we use antioxidants, but antioxidants are used to stop the oxidation process. So when the dyes start to break down, it prevents them from breaking down. That's the only reason we have an antioxidant in our hair colors. <clears throat> Artificial pigment has no way of preventing this from occurring. All hair color pr products are affected by sunlight, by UVA rays. The only way to prevent or delay breaking down process is with a coating product or spray. Yes, if you put something on your hair, which is a coating product, that can give you some UVA protection, but it's not in the chemical you're using on your hair. Ergo, it is chemically impossible for demi permanent colors to prevent protect against UV rays. See what's happening here? Can you see there's lots of stuff going on? <clears throat> Someone reads this article and then they're totally confused. I love this one. Number six, it adds a brilliant layer of shine. I love this one. This is the biggest foolish story of anything we do in this industry. It has a brilliant layer of shine. If your hair isn't shiny, chances are you need a gloss. Any color service or haircut can look completely drab if it lacks shine and luster. That's true. Think of it this way. When you get your nails done, would you ever skip the top coat? Now, so what now they're doing is they're using the analogy of fingernail polish with hair color. Okay. Could you imagine if your nail tech told you that you didn't need one? I surely would never go back to that tech because clearly they are ill-informed. Well, here's the reality. First of all, <laughs> there's no layering in hair color. I don't know why we keep going down this pathway. There, nothing is layered on top. The keratin on your, in your fingernail is much different than the makeup of the keratin in your hair. Yes, they are both keratin, but they react differently, okay? The only thing that can actually coat the hair to, as a color, and it's not really coating, would be direct dyes. So direct dyes will embed themselves in the cuticle layer, and they will also stain the cuticle. You can call that a coating, if you wish. <laughs> but only direct dyes can do that. So if you're using a dummy permanent color, you're not coating the hair at all. You can't compare the keratin in your nails to the keratin in your hair, okay? Nail polish is a coating product. Hair color is not. Two different types of products. The problem is we pull in analogies that are not relevant to the product that we're working with. Shine can only be created by a smooth surface like a compact cuticle. It's the only way you're going to get shine. You know, it's the only way you're going to get shine. Remember, the hair is a fiber. It's not a solid. It's not a like a solid piece of wood where you put polyurethane on it. The hair is a fiber. It also has a cuticle. When raised, what happens is the reason that doesn't get shiny if the cuticle is raised is because the light rays, instead of being reflected off the surface of the cuticle, are refracted. Google that, you'll find out that a refracted light is a light that is bent. It doesn't strike an object and come back directly to you. It strikes an object and flies off in a different angle. That's what we call refracted light. That is why people with naturally curly hair if they let their hair dry naturally into the curls, it actually looks lighter than if they were to flat iron it or smooth it. Why is that? One is refracting light, one is reflecting light. Ergo, it is chemically impossible to add extra shine with a demi-permanent hair color. Again, 
over and over this this thing keeps coming up it keeps repeating itself it's frightening <coughs> and i love this one finally it acts like a thermal protection for hot tools and protects your color from excessive heat this is all demi permanent color that they're saying right glossing adds a barrier of shine and protection that is essential to any and every color all right so let's think about glosses and since i was part of the team who created the first officially call, called gimme permanent color in our industry yes in that product we put silicone dimethicone if you will to add some shine the problem is is that that's not a thermal insulator dimethicone has a melting point of approximately 400 degrees so if you process a semi permanent a demi permanent color under heat at 126 degrees under the dryer <coughs> and then you use a flat iron at 400 degrees um dimethicone really pretty much gets destroyed okay um effective thermal protectants all coat the hair so there are many thermal protectants that you can use out there that will help protect the hair and it also keeps the color from burning out on you. I don't know if you've ever had this happen, but you could do a beautiful hair color. And if your hot tools are too hot, it, it browns out. You actually burn the color right out of the hair. <coughs> Demi permanent hair colors are not coating the hair. They become part of the hair structure. They do have dimethicone, as I said, most flat irons at 400 degrees. So you can see how this doesn't make sense. Ergo, it is chemically impossible for Jimmy permanent hair colors to be effective as a thermal protector. Use a thermal protector if you want one, but don't expect it to happen with your Jimmy permanent color or your gloss. All right, the final piece of this whole thing. Recommended pricing for gloss is around the same price as a root retouch. This is exactly what they put on social media. Gloss should be applied to dry, towel-dried hair for maximum benefits. That's true. Most all of them are formulated to be applied to dry hair. But nobody in this industry, very few people, I should say, apply them to dry hair. They all apply them to wet hair at the shampoo bowl because they're so afraid that the color is going to go, go south on them, going to go in a different direction. And I love this one. Every minute of gloss, a, every minute a gloss is left on is one shampoo that it will last. Formulate properly and process for at least 20 minutes. Now, I find that interesting because in our industry, as far as I know, there is no scientific metric for measuring the longevity of a color based on processing time. We do say, maximum development if you get maximum development you'll have more longevity in your color but <clears throat> the longevity of hair color is based on several pieces of criteria other than how long you process it's based on the integrity of the hair it's based on the formulation that you use it's based on the processing time how long did you process it did you process it for a full 20 to 30 minutes or did you process it for two minutes at the shampoo bowl because you were in a hurry uh, post-oxidation procedures, did you do a perfect post-oxidation where you treated it with something as more acidic over and over several times? Remember that base or alkaline always is stronger than acid. So when hair is in an, an alkaline state, it's imperative that I do several steps in order to bring it back into the acid range. And is your client using proper support products? And that can determine how much, how long the color will last. And how do they treat their hair at home? <clears throat> you know, we like to assume that clients listen to everything we say and they treat their hair perfectly, but we find most often they don't. And um, that is what causes, you know, some of those problems to arise with their hair color services. So, one thing I want to leave you with today is just remember this. We send in words and we receive in pictures. So you, if you are an educator and you're watching this video, I have some things I'd like to share with you. So first of all, 
if you're going to use an analogy, please choose an analogy or a metaphor that relate to the subject. <clears throat> One of the biggest problems we make in education is we choose analogies that don't support the story. And, uh, and I think it's just because we don't think about it. You know, it makes sense in our head. There's a lot of things that make sense in our head, but once we say it, it doesn't make sense to those people listening to it. So choose analogies and metaphors that relate to your subject. Number two, be clear with your explanation. One of the biggest problems I have is because I speak scientific or the science language, and some hairdressers don't understand what I'm talking about, and I assume they would. So I have to break myself down and be more self-explanatory. I have to be make sure that the explanations are clear, and I always check to make sure. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It doesn't hurt to ask because we know in public speaking that you're going to lose 20% of your audience for a myriad of reasons that have nothing to do with the reason that you are there. <clears throat> People will disconnect, and you want them to stay engaged with you. Ask them to share the information as they understand it back to you or to one of their partners in the class. This will help you to make sure to see if the information has transferred, meaning that if they can at least explain it to someone else or explain it back to you, then it will help you identify the, the clarity that you need to focus on and clarify anything that, that they miss. So look, this is my little story today. It's a little long video, but um, I thought it was important to talk about this. Don't believe <coughs> everything you see on social media. I guarantee you that there's a lot of information, but a lot of pieces are missing. And uh, that's why my hashtag is LWIDK, learn what you don't know. It's important to do that. The more we learn, the more successful we'll be, the more confident we will be. So hopefully you will take that away from this today. Now, lots of people have been asking me about upcoming classes. And so I wanted to share with you, we have one class upcoming. Max and I are doing one on February the 6th called the Telltale Hair where we're gonna take you inside the hair strand. Why shouldn't we know about the hair? Why, why is that important? Because that's our canvas, that's what we work on. And so you have to understand how it interacts and how it relates and what it contributes to the finished color service. Next, uh, on February the 28th, uh, we have a class coming up called the Science of It. We're gonna talk about how hair color is made, understanding that it's not paint, that it's chemicals, <clears throat> and give you some ideas that you, some tests and experiments you could do at home to verify and validate the information that we share. And of course, Hair Color School has been a great success for us here at Guru Nation. Uh, we had our first session in the fall. We are just finishing up our winter session, and we now have uh, tuitions available for the spring session. Uh, 2022, the first class will begin on March the 6th. You can go to our website. You can check that out. You can purchase your tuition. Um, <clears throat> it has been great and successful. It is 30 days of content of contact with three coaches. We have a session every week, and you have homework to do. And uh, it really is helping people learn and understand about hair color. And of course, everybody's been asking about my book because uh, the original uh, plan was that it would be out here in the end of January, but um, publishing takes a few little time. But here's what we do know. I just got an email yesterday. The editing is, is ready and they're going to send that to me. I have to read and approve the editing for the manuscript and then send it back to them. Uh, when I talked to them yesterday, they said that we would be available for pre-orders. That doesn't mean the book will be out, but it will be available for pre-orders beginning April 1st. So uh, mark that on your calendar. Thank you all for checking with us. Um, we are excited about the book and about what we believe is really going to work well for us. And of course, uh, I'd love to have you stay in touch with me. 
Uh, you can find us on Facebook at Guru Nation, or you can, uh, if you're interested, join our private group called Guru Hair Tribe. It is a non-branded um, group, private, and uh, we talk about hair color. We help you understand hair color. Uh, we give you the facts and let you make those decisions because you you need to be the informed person. Uh, I invite you to follow me on Instagram. You can find me at Real Captain Color, and uh, we'd love for you to watch us there. And uh, I have lots of videos on the IG on my IG TV, and uh, lots of uh, information to share with you. Or you can visit us at our website www.gurunation.net. Uh, check our educational catalog. <laughs> and the easiest way to get to that is to go to Instagram to my to my page on Instagram and click on the link um, right there in my bio. It'll take you directly to the educational page. And of course, don't forget to watch us on YouTube. Max and I do rabbit trails on a regular basis. We have a new program coming up called The Chat which should be uh, airing soon on YouTube. And of course, you can find this program here, A Little Conversation, on YouTube as well. In any case, I hope you all have enjoyed this. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. Uh, I know I spent a little t longer than you expected, but uh, I felt I needed to share this message with you. If you enjoy this, please share it with your friends. So until I see you again, from my heart to yours, I am Captain Color. I am out. I wish you all an amazing week. Bye-bye. See you soon.